checking the identification of your model is important thing to do before estimation. Identification basically means that there exists a single best solution to the model. If a model is not identified, then it means that we cannot know based on the data what are the optimal parameter values. So we can't really say anything about the parameter values or at least some of the values unless the model is fully identified. Normally when you check identification you can apply certain rules. For example uh, a three indicator factor is always identified and there are other rules that you can apply. But there are also scenarios that are not covered by our rules. For example the identification status of bifactor models is a bit more complicated than identification of normal models. In these scenarios it's important or useful to understand how identification can be proven. If you understand the principle of proving identification then you may be able to prove the identification or non-identification of certain parts of the model and that can help you in understanding if the model as a whole is identified or not. Identification or proof of identification can be a bit tedious but understanding the principle is nevertheless useful. I will show you now how to prove the identification of a factor model with three indicators. So here's our model. We have one factor, we have three indicators and we have a rule that this is always identified. But why is it always identified and how do we prove the identification status? Let's first check how much data we have and how many things we want to estimate from the, that data. So uh, we first need to set a scale for the latent variable because setting the variance or, or setting a rule for setting the variance of the latent variable is, is one of the things that we must do for every latent variable in the model. If our latent variables don't have scales then the model cannot be identified. We have uh, six sample covariances so that's the equation where it comes from. We have three variances and then our uh, these three indicators have three correlations. So there's x1, x2, x2, x3 and x1, x3 correlation or covariance. So we have six units of information. We are estimating six different parameters. So we're estimating the factor variance. We are estimating two loadings. The first loading is constrained to be one for our scale setting. And then we have these three error variances that we estimate. So that gives us six. And six minus six is zero. So we have zero degrees of freedom this model if it's identified it's going to be just identified because we don't have any excess information. So uh, we know that the non-negative decrease of freedom is a necessary condition for identification but it's not sufficient. So, so how do we know is this identified or not? And more importantly how do we prove it? The idea of identification is that if we know there are the correct population we know the full population data can we from that full population data calculate unique estimates for all the parameters of the model? So identification concerns are the model and the population and, and not really about the sample. So there is the issue of empirical under identification that I'll talk uh, a bit later on this video. So let's start proving the identification. If this model is correct for the data then uh, these uh, sample covariances should follow or population covariances should correspond to the model implied covariances. And these are the model implied covariances by the model. So for example sigma 1 1 which is the variance of x1 is, is psi plus theta 1. And uh, the variance of uh, the second indicator sigma 2 2 is uh, psi multiplied by lambda square. So the factor loading to the second power plus theta for the error variance. So we have these six equations and uh, now we, we can start working on, on these equations and, and try solving the parameter values. So assume that the population covariances are known. The question of identification is can we solve the values of every unknown parameter or every estimated parameter from these covariances? And uh, how do we go about that? Well the first thing that we, uh, we should observe is that these three first equations are simply used to solve the error variances. Why is that the case? Because theta 1 occurs only in, in the first equation, theta 2 only in the second equation and theta 3 only in the third equation. 
we need these three equations to solve these three parameters and we can't use those equations for anything else. Because if we use this uh, sigma 1 1 equation for something else then we wouldn't be able to solve theta 1. So we'll be just looking at these, uh, these three covariances sigma 1 2 sigma 1 3 and sigma 2 3 and try to solve the factor loadings the two factor loadings lambda 2 and lambda 3 and the factor variance psi from, from those equations. So let's let's take a look at how we solve that. And um, so what we do first is that we uh, we try to uh, eliminate equa one equation and one parameter at a time. So what we do is that we take the third equation here and we solve for psi. So that's the equation for psi. It is uh, sigma 2 3 divided by lambda 2 pro times lambda 3. So that's that's our equation for psi and now we can eliminate psi from the first two equations. So we just uh, take these first two equations and then we uh, plug in that equation for psi and we simplify. We have these simpler equations each have only one unknown and if an equation has one unknown we can solve it. So we can just uh, solve and that gives us lambda 2 and lambda 3. So this is a uh, high school math pretty simple this far. How do we solve uh, this uh, psi then? Well we just plug in the values of lambda 2 and lambda 3 into the equation of psi. We get uh, this kind of equation. We simplify and that gives us psi. So psi is the uh, product of two covariances divided by one covariance. So now we have solved uh, the lambdas and the psi and we just need to uh, solve the thetas to prove that this model is fully identified. So let's take a look at the original set of equations. That's here and we have already solved this part. So we have solved lambda 2 and lambda 3 and we have solved psi. Then we just uh, plug in the values of, uh, of these, these solved values to these th uh, equations for the error variances and, uh, and we solve and that gives us a error variance. So pretty simple. So the three indicator factor model solving the identification is, is fairly straightforward. And for exercise it may be useful for, for you to actually uh, do this uh, solution yourself from scratch so you understand the principles of, of proving identification and how this, uh, this covariance algebra works. If we take a look at these uh, equations in the standardized form these are the solutions for the standardized uh, coefficients and uh, the, the procedure for getting these coefficients or this solution is the same. One in interesting thing here is that uh, these square roots are they uh, the square root has basically two solutions. So uh, we have uh, the positive solution and the negative solution. So when we fix uh, the scale of the factor model by fixing the variance of the factor then that leaves the signs of these factor loadings as indeterminate. So a factor model with uh, let's say loadings of, of 1, 1 and 1 would fit the model there equally well as factor loadings of minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. It just uh, switches the, uh, the direction of the, co of the scale of the latent variable without uh, affecting the variance. So uh, the, the direction of the factor loadings is actually indeterminate in this standardized solution. How do we know that these are actually the, the correct answers, the correct solutions? Well uh, we, can, we can just apply these to empirical data. And I'm going to use R and in the Lavon package. So we are going to fit a simple three factors model of x1, x2 and x3 from the Holzinger and Swine 4 data set and uh, this is our estimates that we got. These are the standardized estimates and uh, then we can up and these are the sample covariances that we have. We can apply these equations here using these sample covariances and verify that we actually get the same coefficients as we get here. So because this model is just identified it means that we can actually solve the maximum likelihood estimates from the sample covariances. Solving an over-identified model 
would not be possible this way. It wouldn't produce the maximum likelihood estimates. The reason for this is that over-identification implies that at least one parameter can be solved in multiple different ways and um, we can get multiple different values depending on which covariances we apply. But here in just identified models we can just solve each uh, parameter just in, in, uh, in one way. Okay, so let's take a look at an another interesting thing here and uh, what will happen if one of the covariance between x1, x2 and x3 is zero. So we can see that we would have division of, of by zero here and of course you can divide by zero. So uh, what will happen if we try to estimate a model where so one of one pair of indicators is uncorrelated in, this, in the sample. Well let's just try out using R and uh, this uh, produces an empirical under identified model. So what we do here is that we uh, we take the same data set Holzing and Swine for data set and we uh, just take the sample covariance and we replace one of those covariances the covariance between x1 and x2 with zero and then we try to estimate the software tells us that it cannot find a solution and if it cannot find a solution that typically means that there is uh, no unique solution so there it's possible that there are multiple different solutions that are equally good. Another possibility is that one of the parameter values converges toward plus or minus infinity that's also a sign of, of under identification. And if we take a look at these parameter values, we will see that uh, we have some extreme variance estimates minus 68 when the total variance of the data is it's roughly uh, one. And uh, then we have these uh, rather extreme factor loading 120 compared to the others. And this is a sign that uh, the model is not identified. Also, we don't have the standard errors and that's uh, a good indication of an under identified model. How would you know why the model is not identified? And uh, well you would just have to for example look at the, uh, the Hessen matrix and see how the optimization works to understand why it fails. Another thing that you can do here is work try to work through the covariances and understand what is required for the covariance values for this model to be identified. But to be sure, just applying the three indicator factor rule and declaring that this model is identified is not sufficient and it wouldn't work because those rules don't guarantee the identification for every possible set of uh, covariances. It's possible that the model would be identified for some covariance values but not others. And this is the condition known as empirical under identification. Generally when you face this kind of problems your software does not converge, it produces estimates that are extreme or does not produce standard errors. It's a good indication to, to start troubleshooting what is going on, why is it not identified instead of just trying different values and see whether you can make the problem disappear. Often it's the case that you make the problem disappear by hiding it instead of solving it which is obviously not a good strategy for applied research.